All right, hello everybody. Uh, I'm Warren Flax. Uh, behind me is my mother, Dee Silver. Uh, she's the founder here of Silver Brush Limited, and um, we are excited to join you again. Thank you for those of you who've been joining us now every, every two weeks for the past three or four months. Um, <clears throat> this is our early July edition here of the Facebook Live from Silver Brush Limited. Uh, today, we're very excited. We're going to talk to you about acrylic brushes. Uh, my mom's got some great stuff here uh, to work with. Uh, with some acrylics and and we have a great brush for you we promised you a giveaway so take a look at this we have a set of ultra minis this is a great set uh, it's a six piece set uh, our UMS 2460 one of our best best sellers and one of you who is watching this today who engages with us uh, in the chat box make sure you say your name uh, and where you are um, and then, of course, ask your questions. We love your questions. And uh, at the end of the webinar, we'll go 45 minutes today. One of you will win this beautiful set of ultra mini brushes, which will be great for acrylics uh, as well as other media. So that being said, um, <clears throat> just a little brief uh, introduction because uh, many of you have seen my mom before, many of you have not. Uh, but uh, this woman behind me, Deirdre Silver, uh, is world famous at this point in the world of art materials and brushes. Um, people uh, request to have her speak all around the United States, Canada, Asia, um, the Middle East, South America. Uh, there are literally people all over the world who have taken training with uh, my mother on artist brushes, care for artist brushes, what makes a great brush, uh, when you should be selecting what kind of brush. And so you're gonna get that here today. She's gonna share it with you, um, specifically for the acrylic brushes. She's been doing this uh, with her own company now for 30 years uh, and in the artist material industry for an additional 13 years before that. Um, so we've got a lot to, to share with you. We're excited for the next 45 minutes um, and uh, I will turn it over to you. Mother. Okay, thank you, Warren. Yeah. Good afternoon, everyone, of wherever you are in the good world. Good evening or good morning. Good evening or, or good morning, right? It's morning in uh, the Philippines. I know we have some people here from there Hi, already. how are you? So thank you very much for joining us today. I hope you get something out of this. I always try and give you a little tidbit and information about how to take care of your brushes, what makes a really good brush, what you can do to preserve your brush so that it lasts much, much longer. Uh, the one thing I do appreciate, maybe I'm from Humble Beginnings, is that each brush is a precious tool for you and you've spent your hard-earned money on it and you do want to preserve it. And you don't want it to fall apart. And you don't want it to become a piece of junk. So you're willing to go the extra mile to take care of it. And um, so that's what I, I really want to impress upon you. You can have a silver brush for a very, very long time. Um, I remember giving out um, samples of our ruby satin brush um, they were prototypes in 1995, and um, would you believe they're still being used today? And these are very active artists. They're still very aggressively painting every single day. But when you have a really good tool and you keep it really clean and well, you know what? It's going to last many, many years. And it's going to keep on performing, and it's going to have a lot of function. So um, what I'm saying is for your benefit, and um, actually, it's not even for our benefit, because maybe if you didn't take good care of your brushes, you might throw them away. But the reality is, you paid a lot of money for them, and I want them to last for you. And I want you to enjoy them. Enjoy the experience of painting, because there's nothing more um, soul-enriching than making something creative, even if you're doing it as a hobby and you're not making your living from it. Um, there's something that you need to do that expresses your own inner being and your own desire. I've always felt that an artist brush should be an extension of the hand and you should be able to manipulate it just like you would your finger or your arm or anything else. So it's got to be really comfortable in your hand. It's got to really express what you want to do. And that can only be done with a really good quality artist brush. Let's take these ultra mini brushes uh, that Warren uh, that we're going to be raffling off today and giving you a free prize, which is, this is just an awesome set. It really is. But when I designed this back in 19, uh, I think it was 92 or 95, I wanted a small miniature head. Look at that little head on a, and a big comfort grip handle. Notice that large handle. And this is so that when you're holding this brush, you don't get achy. You don't get achy. So what are some of the things you can do with a little brush that has this shape? What you can do is 
You can paint on the face of a watch. You can paint anything you want on a very, very small surface. And so many people have sent us <coughs> such, <coughs> excuse me, such beautiful artwork on little teeny surfaces. Uh, these little art cards, you've seen those little art cards. We've seen uh, beautiful work on eggs, on rice. So that's, that's kind of what the Ultra Mini is for. A lot of people like to use it just to get that little teeny, teeny little detail work that you couldn't get with any other brush that's out there. Let me just pick that up a minute. So it's something that's really small, something that's really concise, not a big broad brush stroke or anything like that. That's not what Ultra Mini is for. It's for that real little teeny stroke spot. Okay, let's move on because I've got a lot to show you. Ultra Mini comes in 29 different shapes and sizes. Isn't that great? And so here you've got a wonderful liner. Imagine a liner with a comfort grip handle. I just think that's just the most wonderful thing. Here you can hold it all day long, do your signature, do any kind of tendrils or lines that you want to do, and you have this nice comfort grip handle. I don't think there's a better combination. I really don't. So let's, let's do some lines for you. Now, the paint I'm using today, I have a potpourri of paint. So I've got fluid acrylics over here. Let me bring this over here so that you can see it. I've got fluid acrylics over here. I've got, that's the two. I've got gouache over here. I've got ink. I've got fluorescent ink. And I've got two different, um, one is heavy bodied acrylic and the other is just a regular tube acrylic. So I've got a nice array of that. And then I brought my watercolor palette out, which you can see is pretty dirty, but so what? Because that's the way I do, we work sometimes in um, watercolors. But I also have another little product I'm gonna be demonstrating today, and that is walnut ink. And the walnut ink is a very different kind of medium, and I know it's very popular today, so I thought I'd give it a try and show you some of the things you could do with our brushes. Um, because uh, some of these products you need a very thirsty brush to pick up the color. So it's important that it, it'll hold the moisture on, on the head. So we've got our Ultra Mini. Let me do some lines for you with our, 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 um, our liner. How about I use some of this beautiful fluorescent ink, which is really very pretty. So we've got some fluorescent ink that we're getting some lines on over here. And remember, the longer the length out the brush, the more paint it'll hold, and it, you can get a lot of paint, but it's very, very uh, hard to control that stroke. The shorter the length out, the more controlling it is. But you can get some real fun, fun uh, strokes on that. And there's a little bit of line work done with an ultra mini brush. Now, these are extremely good brushes. So we were going to start with good, better, and best. But we really just don't have good brushes. We have very good brushes. They are excellent. And I thought I'd start with our round silver white. So now silver white is something that I know you talk a lot about for watercolors. I do. But here you're using it with acrylics. I do, yes. One of the great things about the um, silver white is that it's a, a multi-diameter filament, synthetic filament. So that means you have all these different uh, size filaments, and it means you're gonna have wonderful friction on the filament itself, and the, and the um, moisture won't puddle out and pool on the surface. How many of you have the experience of where um, you, put, you put the brush down and all the paint flows out? You go, now what the heck is that all about? Well, but the problem with that is that's the filament is like this. That's that we don't have any brushes that have filament like this. So what is what is a synthetic filament? It's an extruded plastic. It comes out of a machine that it looks just like a meat grinder, the way meat comes out. If you Later. don't put different size filaments in the brush, you have no um, no friction to hold the, the moisture on the filament itself. And it's all going to flow right out. So this is an extraordinary brush. This has between um, five and eight different size diameters. So you're gonna have wonderful friction. It's gonna hold color very, very well. And let's play again with a fluid acrylic, which I think is one of the great medi new mediums of our age. I really do. I love the way it, the colors are vibrant. I love the way you can do strokes. I love the way it holds. It's got so much, look how, look how much you can use this with. And I haven't reloaded at all. 
that's a credit to the paint and it's certainly a credit to silver white it's an extraordinary brush by the way priced right it really is it's a wonderful series it is priced right and it's perfect for acrylic colors now in my last lecture you may have heard me talking about acrylic colors I mean you may have heard me talking about silver white in watercolor it's a wonderful watercolor brush and it's it's really very very um, it, it's one of those brushes that just keeps on painting so here I'm going to use a little bit in watercolor I'll make my watercolor a little bit wet which is the great thing about watercolor that's that's the fun thing about it and here we are in watercolor so I used it in fluid acrylics I'm using it in watercolor and then I'm going to go back and I'm going to use it in gouache this is some gouache over here gouache is a bit thicker and it, it'll you can do an awful lot with gouache you know that's a um, opaque watercolor and look how beautifully that's going on with the silver white it's really an extraordinary brush made for all water media it really is and I'm gonna go back and do that again and I'm now I'm gonna do it with the ink that I showed you before so here's one brush that's a thirsty little brush that's that's a very economical but it is very very high quality and here we are with the ink clearly it doesn't have the pigmentation that uh, acrylics does but you still get the idea of that great fluorescent look the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to work with it in uh, this is heavy acrylic and here we go we got some heavy acrylic here now you know what you want to do with you with the artwork that you want to do and you'd want to know and you know what you can do uh, how you want the pr presentation to look if you want it to look a flatter color if you want it to look brighter um, different paints of course will give you a different uh, different effects but what I wanted to show you is how how versatile is this brush I've showed it to you in ink I've showed it to you in gouache in heavy bodied acrylic regular acrylic and fluid acrylics so you've got a real you know this real variety of, of different color that you can use one brush for and so you know it's really worth the money so um, this brush might be 50 cents to a dollar more than the other white tack lines you see in the market but it's going to last two three times longer it's going to be that much more durable and it's extremely versatile as you can see let me interrupt you because we have some questions sure. and i also want to say hello to we have so many people saying hello now hi so hi everybody um steven just asked a great question he is in i want to say singapore hi. um steven is asking if the silver white bristle how does that compare to the black velvet two totally different things totally different things first of all black velvet is a combination of squirrel hair and a synthetic fiber it's a different kind of synthetic fiber that works extremely well with the squirrel hair and it works to make it uh, in a um, it's a very very absorbent hair and it's going to hold a huge amount of color it's going to hold more color than the silver white so that that's one of the main things but it's also because of the combination of hair, it's also a lot more expensive. Whereas the silver white, which is our very good, uh, better brush, um, is very, very economical. So it depends on what you want to do, but if you're just starting out and you're doing it as a hobby and you don't feel like spending a lot of money, this, is, this silver white is an extraordinary brush to get started with. And then you'll see the quality of it, and you'll see how long it lasts, and you'll say, well, there's a big difference in quality than the other brushes that I had been buying. And that's what makes silver white a really great value. It really is. I wouldn't put them in the same category, even though you can use um, sil <coughs> you can <coughs> excuse me, silver white in both the in watercolors as well as black velvet. But if you must know, and you'll take a look at our new packaging, you'll see that black velvet is not suggested for anything other than watercolor. I actually would not use it in acrylics. I would not use it in um, uh, gouache. I would not use it in fluid acrylics. It's got enough of a, a thickener in that um, medium that I think it's too heavy for black velvet. And the, the worst thing that we can do is destroy our brush. And the worst thing we can do is put something in it that only works very fairly. One of the problems with acrylics is that 
when it dries up a little bit, it gets heavy. Have you ever noticed that? It gets a little gummy and heavy? Black velvet's not made for that. Black velvet's made for a very wet, very, very wet watercolor um, surface. So this, this is another acrylic color, and notice how beautifully that's working with, um, with silver white. It's a very versatile brush, and um, it's not going to you know, hold uh, as much moisture as black velvet. And if you're just a watercolor colorist and you want to spend on a really good product, of course I would su suggest black velvet. But if you're just getting into it and you're not a professional and you, you're not selling your paintings, maybe you could start with a, an excellent beginner brush and, and work into something that's more expensive. And certainly we want you to have a very good painting experience. Let me say some hellos here. Because Hello. we have people from all over. All right. Noeletta Cardenas is here from Washington State. Nice. She's been on quite a few of our uh, of our Facebook Live, so hello. Uh, Angel Ann Colapano is here from the Philippines. Hi. Shahel Ayesha is from India. Hi. Uh, Melissa Turner from San Diego, California. Welcome. Michael Tanay from Malaysia. Welcome. Vicky Ojeda, I recognize that name. She's yes. here from California. Yes. Um, Rick Tunak from the Philippines. Patricia Manca Mancasola is here. She is from Argentina. Oh, welcome. Uh, Marthiel Lanath, she's here from Hamburg, Germany. So, hello. Welcome. Uh, Rick Tunak from the Philippines. Wow. Big Philippine contingent today. That's right, that's right. Yeah. And, uh, well, I think because of the time zone difference, doing this earlier. Okay, uh, A few more hellos here. We have so many people saying hello. This is great. Thank you all. Um, I, I mentioned Stephen uh, Tijo. He's yeah. in uh, Singapore. Yeah. I don't think I got his name right. Sorry. Uh, Ron Marie Ramazora is from the Philippines. Uh, Viviana Mundo from Cuernavaca, Mexico. Welcome. Uh, Noreen Awai from oh, Cairo, Noreen. Egypt. Hi, my friend. How are you? And let's see. I said Vicky Ojeda, California. Who else? Uh, another one, Philippines. Nicole Nuada Ranyon. Welcome. So hello to her. And I think we're getting down there. Oh, and Amy Shawley, one of our silver brush educators in Virginia. Ah, wait there. Hello, Welcome. Amy. Uh, Hina Dand from India is here. And Rita uh, Pankaj, I, I think that's also India. And Carlos Mesa from South Texas. Awesome. Stay safe. All right, well, hello, everybody, and thank you for joining us. Uh, you're going to go on to... I'm going to see if I can make some more, a big mess on my on surface here. Um, so what I'm doing now is I'm working with a line called Silver Silk. This is a grade up from the Silver White. This is a very different kind of series, and um, one of the things Warren reminded me that I'm supposed to do throughout um, my lecture is to give you some brush tips. Now, I've already given these brush tips in previous Facebook Lives, but I'm going to do it again. It doesn't hurt to be repetitive. Remember that when you want to dry your brushes, you want to dry them flat. So I'm using a little <clears throat> ashtray that my brother-in-law gave me because nobody smokes anymore. But one of the great things that you want to do with an ashtray, what, why I think it's so great for this type of thing, is you want to take another brush, hold it like this, and get that head to flow down a little bit. Now there's all kinds of little Jim Jicks on the market, uh, little accessories where you can get the brushes to, where the heads flow down and uh, you know turn it upside down and let the moisture f flow out. That's terrific. But suppose you don't have that. Suppose you don't feel like spending the money on something like that. This is a, a common household item. If you don't have an ashtray, certainly a crystal ashtray, look how fancy we are, just put them flat on your surface. Let it hang over the edge so the air can circulate around it and it'll dry. What we want to stop is moisture from going inside the ferrule and getting the paint inside the ferrule. It becomes a bear to get that out. We all know that. So we want to stop that from happening, and the best way to do that is to let the brush dry flat. That's very important. It's a simple enough technique. It's, um, it's so simple that people go, why didn't I think of that? But we t we're, we're programmed to put our brushes in the little cup that we use, and the moisture starts going in. 
One of the reasons why Silver Brush, and I believe we're the only factory that does this, we put a triple epoxy barrier within the ferrule. And this is a nickel-plated brass ferrule. That's the very strongest ferrule. And we do that so that we keep moisture from going on the handle. But how frustrating is it for you to, for, as an artist, come back to your brush and the handle is all cracking and it's corroded. I can't think of anything more frustrating than that. I, it, and it's, you know, it, it has happened to me, but I tend to be really, really careful with my brushes. Leaving brushes inside a, a, um, a water bucket, leaving brushes where they're immersed in water, especially overnight, that's a big no-no. So um, think about your brushes. You're on this YouTube, um, you're on this Facebook Live, and you're obviously, you want to take care of your brushes. So make sure that you, let's take this off. Let's, let's make sure that we put our brushes flat, or if we can raise and elevate that back, that's the best thing in the world for artist brushes. Okay, I'm going to move on to our silver silk. So we started with silver white, now we're going to move to silver silk. This is all for acrylic color. I wanted you to see how vibrant and how much use you can, you can make with these brushes. It's very, very exciting. Um, I designed silver silk. It took me a couple of years to get this correct. The silver silk <clears throat> is this beautiful purple handle. Let's, let's hold that up nice and close. That's our cat's tongue. We have that in two different uh, sizes. <clears throat> Can you see that? Yes. Good. Let us show you the bottom of our little um, sheet here. This is, the bottom of this is really tells the whole story. So on the bottom, you're gonna notice some gradations around the edges of the brushes, around the circle, that's right. That's done deliberately. That's done so that the moisture will stay on this synthetic fiber. So when you're using a very interesting, um, this new wonderful uh, acrylic that I really like a lot, which is fluid acrylic, you need something that's going to hold it on the surface of the, of the brush really well. And that's the great thing about silver silk. It keeps on holding, and this is fluid acrylics. And look how nicely that holds right on that surface. Um, One of the things I really enjoy about this brush is the feeling in my hand. It's a very comfortable brush. You don't feel it's like it's awkward in your hand. It's got a nice little uh, bevel at the uh, middle over here so you can put your hand in there. And then we have this wonderful painting capacity. This is all fluid acrylics. Fluid acrylics is a very unique kind of medium. I respect the uh, paint companies that came out with it in the last few years. And it really is something, it really is. It covers an awful lot of uh, surface. And I think you can get a very interesting technique that you might not be able to get with a tube acrylic or and certainly not a heavy bodied acrylic. And, or a gouache too, because you get a lot more covering than you will with a gouache. But the next thing I wanted to show you that I found very interesting, and because the silver silk can hold this, I'm gonna put it in a really wet medium, which is this walnut ink. Now this is something I'm just getting used to, and I don't know how many of you actually use this, but this is a very interesting medium. I, I'm just getting used to it now, but look at the beautiful strokes that you can get with the brush, but the lovely coloring that you can get with this type of ink. Would you now, ever use that on silk? I absolutely would use it on silk. The only thing is I don't think there's enough coverage with the, uh, the, the walnut ink. The brush I would definitely use on silk. Sure. I think that would absolutely do fantastically well. Um, this is a very, very light uh, type of medium, which is purpose, pur purposefully. Um, I can see, uh, uh, since it's a sepia color, let me see if I can see that over there. It's a sepia color. Um, you can see that it's very much like old photography. So maybe this is done with some photog you know, retouching and uh, other things like that, this walnut ink. But the brush that you need is the silver silk. It is extraordinary for this kind of um, product. It holds it on that surface. Remember, it's got a gradient all around the surface of each filament, so there's nothing like silver silk. I know it's being sold now uh, throughout the world. We have, a, um, uh, we have customer in Australia. We have customers in China. We, we know that they're buying it. 
And um, I'm sure if you ask your dealer in your community um, where can you buy it, I'm sure that they'll have silver silk for you. So we continue to move up in terms of quality, um, although silver silk is right up there with the very finest. This is our ruby satin. Ruby satin I put in when we could no longer get mongoose hair as a, in artist brushes. Uh, mongoose hair was deemed endangered, and so when we had to look around for something else that felt just like mongoose hair, had that same nice um, movement, but of course this is a synthetic hair, so it's not gonna be perfect, but it's gonna be terrific. So here it is, I've used it in walnut ink over here, and then we're gonna use ruby satin. This is another very versatile brush, stiffer, stiffer than the silver silk, stiffer than the silver white. So if you're a person that likes to um, paint still lifes, paint landscapes, mm -hmm. if you like to go out and paint uh, plein air, you might be very interested in the ruby satin because this is always gonna stay exactly the way it is. Question and, from Melissa Turner, are the Melissa. silver silk uh, are they stiffer or softer than the Art Sherpa brushes? Oh, much softer. They're much softer than the Art Sherpa brushes, yes. Uh, Art Sherpa, as a matter of fact, is one of the most stiff brushes that there is. Um, and it, but when you use Ruby Satin, you're going to see this has so much flexibility and so much movement. Um, it, it makes it much more versatile. It really does. So this is our silver uh, ruby satin. Hey, we have uh, a person here from New Jersey, Mom. Kristen Dambrizi. Hi, New hi, Kristen. Right hi. Up, right up the road. Right up the road. How are you? Well, welcome. So this is um, our ruby satin. Ruby satin is up there with an excellent quality brush. Um, it's going to last a lifetime. Just take good care of it, and you'll see that for yourself. I am use it in the walnut ink. I used it here in the acrylic. Now I'm going to use it in some gouache. That's what this is. I've got some uh, very pretty color, this blue in gouache. And gouache is basically opaque watercolor. And look how nice that is. That really covers very, very well. Um, I love the ruby satin. Um, it would probably be my personal preference because I like to paint a little bit stiffer. And um, Warren's got a very nice chart over there he's gonna show you. If you're curious about the stiffness, we, we put this chart out um, just to give people an idea when they're in stores. So the, the softest is the gold tacklon, like our crystal series, and the, uh, the soft white of the silver white, as you've seen, and then it goes up to the silver silk. And now we're talking about the ruby satin, which is quite stiff. And then you're gonna show the bristlon as well, which would I be am, the most stiff of the silver brush lines. But I'm gonna, we'll before to I do that, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just, run into an, one other uh, series. I just want to see if I have any more ruby satin here. I, I do have a ruby satin, but I have it a, a long handle. Yeah, let, me, let me do this one. Okay. This is a long handle. A lot of these brushes come in not only short handle, but they come in long handle. Why would you use a long handle? If you're standing at an easel, if you're standing up and painting, you want to move back from your painting, you need a longer handle. Those of us that are sitting down, we typically use a short handle. That's the difference between them. So this is my ruby satin in the long handle, and um, this is a silver white in a long handle, and silver silk in a long handle. But I do want to make sure that you know that we, they come both ways. Okay, so the next one I'm going to show you is really one of my favorite brushes that I came out with when I first, when I first designed the entire line. And it's been in our line ever since. What, what's different about it in the last year, we've repackaged it. With, what does that mean? We put it in a different color handle and the hair, the hair looks very different. Because now you can see that there is a lot of animal hair in the Golden Natural. Golden Natural is a very unique blend. And if you don't have a pocketbook for black velvet, we understand that. Go to Golden Natural. It is an extraordinary brush and it holds so much fluid. Those of you, I see that I got some hearts coming up there. Uh, thank you. Um, the, this brush, all you need is one. You really need one and you can complete an entire painting. How terrific is that? So I'm gonna use this. So this is a brush that's so versatile. Unlike black velvet, you can use this in uh, oils, you can use it in acrylics, you can use it in watercolor, wash, fluid acrylics, you name it. Walnut ink, whatever you have that you're painting with. It, that's how versatile it really is. 
So I'm going to first start out. I'm going to give you a clean st surface, sort of. This is my, um, this is my uh, impression of a clean surface. So let's start out first with a fluid acrylic. This is the fluid acrylic with golden natural. Golden natural, how beautifully that holds the moisture. That is because it has a very large amount of animal hair. And truthfully, if, you wanna, if you're on a budget and you, you haven't bought a black velvet, you're thinking about buying a brush, you might consider buying Golden Natural. It is an extraordinary brush. Look how beautifully, and that, that's fluid acrylic. That's much lighter than um, regular tube acrylics. But look how beautifully that moves over the surface. This is an extraordinary quality. It truly is. So we have uh, very good, better, best, this is, we have a lot in the best category, we really do, because we don't, we don't specialize in just good. We, we specialize in very good, excellent, and best. That's where we are. So that is fluid acrylics. Look at that, beautiful, beautiful. My non-talent, I admit it, but I know an awful lot about um, what I'm doing, so that's why they let me come out. Not for any other reason. Now this is gouache. Remember I said that um, it's just an opaque watercolor and look how beautifully that moves on the surface. Because of the animal hair that's in it, it absorbs a tremendous amount of color and it keeps on painting. And gouache is not that easy to hold on a brush. Lots of times if the brush is all the same size filaments, you'll see gouache flow right out of the brush. Okay, that's, that's our gouache and fluid acrylics with with Golden Natural. Now we're going to try something completely different and that's ink. I have this lovely neon ink. Let's see how that goes. And here's the neon ink. Look how beautifully that goes on. It's being held very well by the brush, really extraordinarily well. And again, we're moving the color over the surface. And there you go. This is a, an extraordinary brush that can do the job that you might, might possibly need. You know, I heard a, a lecturer in England the other day, somebody sent me a videotape of her, was a lovely artist, and she said, the only brush you need to paint with is a golden natural round size four. Of course, it tickled me to death, but I also felt that she was right, because it is such a versatile brush, it'll paint almost any si single thing that you want. And of course, being me, I had to come out with all these exotic shapes in the same exact hair. So we have it in a square wash. What do you, here's part of the, uh, the brush care. What do you do with these, with these plastic handles over here? They're not just for good looks, you know. This, you open watercolor blocks with them. You know, let me see if I have a watercolor block here. I can open up, here you go. I'm gonna open this watercolor block with, with the handle. Hold on, let me get in there. Sure, notice, and I'm not using a knife or anything like that, because that, you can cut the paper, you can cut your hands, you can do anything like that. But if you're using the back of this brush, then you've got your watercolor paper will come right off by using this brush. The other thing this handle's very good for is for scraping and burnishing. So if you're putting something down and you want to put, you know, you really want to get it on there, that's the other thing that this handle's for. So you're going to pay more money if you buy this brush because of this handle. I'm, I'm being honest with you, but it's well worth it because it has triple function. It's your handle, it's your watercolor opener, watercolor pad opener, and it's also a burnisher. So let's paint a little bit with it. It's exactly the same as the round, and I'll paint a little bit of, um, this is heavy bodied acrylic. We'll put some of that on here, and you'll see how beautifully it covers the surface. Now I'm using a very heavy paper. This is 140 pound cold press paper, so it may not be perfect for this particular type of medium. Typically we use watercolor on this kind of paper, but you can see how very, very nice it, it covers as well. And that's a heavy bodied acrylic, okay? Just so that you get an idea of uh, the great versatility of these brushes, all right? So in another one, again, in the, in the uh, Golden Natural series, I have it in angle, we have it in fan, we have an extra long ultra round. That's this guy over here. This is very interesting because it's got a nice long tip and you can get lots and lots of lines with that. Again, it's gonna hold an awful lot of color. So let's go back to the side where we're using a stiffer brush. Why would you want a stiffer brush? 
Well, if you're using oil color, if you're using heavy bodied acrylics, you're going to need a uh, brush that really can move that on any surface. What surfaces are there? Well, people paint on board, people paint on all kinds of canvas, papers. Um, there's a million different things that people paint with. Um, they were painting on, for a long, very long time, folks were painting on um, tin and, uh, you know, bricks and other things like that. So you, you really have to have a variety of brushes in your, in your quiver so that you can, um, you know, paint on any surface with any kind of medium. Now this is brand new. This is our, this is our bristle on short handle. And bristle on short handle, I, we've had long handle for many, many years. We've had it at least 20 years in our line, the bristle on long handle, and people absolutely adore it. Why? It's stiffer than everything else. And there's basically, if you want flexibility and you want an extraordinary quality artist brush, you're gonna look at, you can look at bristle on. So again, we're up there with the very, very highest level. Brissalon is a very durable brush. Again, you can have it for years and years and years, and it'll just keep on painting. Take good care of it, clean it at the end of each session, and you'll have it for a very, very long time. But I'm gonna use it today in acrylics. I'm also gonna use it in some fluid acrylics, and we're gonna see how it does. Remember, one of, its, one of the things that it does really well, let me get that off of there, uh, is it's very, very stiff. So I'm always concerned about this type of surface because it's just paper and we could probably dig into the paper if we if I paint it hard enough. So this is first our fluid acrylic. Look how beautifully that um, bristleon holds that on the surface. Wrong surface, great brush. And I, we certainly have a lot of other um, brushes that for uh, fluid acrylic. But I wanted you to have an idea of it, do, it will definitely hold fluid acrylics. Would I recommend it? No, I have a lot of other brushes that I'd recommend for that. But um, this is a, it's, it's a great brush for many different, many different things. I'm going to go skip right over to the, um, try and get some double load over here, to the um, heavy bodied acrylics. And let's see, I got a little more moisture. You want to put that flat and I'll lift this up? Oh, that would be better, yeah. do that. Now anybody that's used Brissalon over the years knows how truly um, durable and long-lasting it is. We, I see these. The I comments we've seen quite a few times today have been about how great it is at pushing heavy body. Oh it, yeah, you really need something that's going to move that over the surface. Uh, that's it, that's a, really a, the primary thing. Uh, I should have, I meant to grab a canvas out in my warehouse today so I would be actually demonstrating on canvas, but um, I just have the paper. Um, one of the things the paper is doing is absorbing the color as I'm putting it on. This is very, very good paper. But the bristleon, you can see, you can move very, very heavy moisture on here. And it's, it's not easy to do. It really is not. It's, uh, let's see, let me use this a little bit. Um, we want to move the color on the surface and there's nothing that can move heavy bodied acrylic, heavy bodied oil on the surface of a canvas, on a board, or anything like that. I love our um, Brissalon series. The other thing you're going to get with Brissalon is years of service. Years of service. I mean, it, take good care of it, as I said, and it's literally going to last you years. Um, it's just not going to wear out. Uh, that's the nature of, of the beast. All of these brushes that I've shown you today, you should be able to buy it once and have it many, many years. The thing that you're gonna to wanna to do in the, in the future is get other sizes. You're gonna get other, well, you're gonna to want to get other shapes. Um, it's, it's an amazing thing that you can trust a brush line to really do its job year after year after year. How is our time? I see we're getting to, we're getting down there. Yeah, we're pretty close. So, okay. um, do you have anything else, or do you want to do well, the giveaway? Well, I want to do one more technique okay. uh, for cleaning, and I'm looking for my little knife. Here's my little knife. Here's my little knife in front of my face. Remember, I've, I've done this for you before, and I want to do it for you again. That when you start 
a, a very, very soft hair brush, like one of our goat hair brushes, I want you to remember that you have to knife the hair. Now you can knife all of the other brushes that you have. You can do it even after you've used it and you're about to use it again, but it's nice and dry. What you want to do is take a plastic, what I use is a plastic butter knife, that's all this is, and I use the back of the head. I want you to know it's the back of the head and not the front, because the front could actually cut the, um, the filaments. We don't want that. But one of the things that's really annoying that nobody can stand, I just had this this morning, is when a hair gets in your painting and you have to stand there with a tweezer to get it out. How do you solve that problem? You knife it. And this is a simple little method, very gently pull out any little excess hair that is uh, in the brush. And you can do the same thing with any size brush also. It's particularly important when you have a soft goat hair brush like ours are. There's nothing softer than our goat hair brushes. There really isn't. Is there something wrong with the brush? No, there's nothing wrong with the brush. The nature of goat hair is that it's extremely soft and it's hard to capture in the ferrule 100% of the time. So there might be a loose hair here and there. If it comes out in clumps, clearly it's, mis it's epoxy barrier and you've got a defective brush, unfortunately. But that won't happen with silver brush. That it just doesn't happen. So here, no hair came out. I think I've cleaned these before. But make sure you do that before you start to paint. And you can do it with any brush. You really can. Here's, here's a little blender that we have for a silver white. We can do it with this. And we can also do it with um, our silver white, you know, just a regular little brush over here and make sure there are no loose hairs. Um, think about how to take care of your brushes. Think about what it is that you're doing, and when you're done with your painting session, take the time to clean them. Because the worst thing that we can do with our brushes is not take care of them. Then they begin to deteriorate, and then you're very aggravated with yourself. There's no reason why you should have to spend more money on something that you've already paid for and um, to replace something. The question is, will that damage the tip? Not at all. I'm doing it very gently, not at all. It won't d damage the tip at all. Not Good even question, on, on round brushes? Nah, not even on round brushes. I'm doing it very gently, just like um, the manufacturers have been teaching me throughout my entire career. I go to the factories where these brushes are made, and I sit with the manufacturers, and we all learn how to make brushes, and that's exactly the way it should be. So, all right, you ready? All right, this is it. Okay, this is, this is a wonderful set, by the way. This is si six of the Ultra Mini brushes with the Comfort Grip handle, and you've got that nice little miniature head, and it's just wonderful. Remember, it's a synthetic fiber, so you don't want to put it in any kind of solvent. No turpentine, no turpentine, okay? But you can use it in uh, uh, almost any medium. I, if you want to use it in oils, you want to use an odorless solvent that you buy in an art supply store not one you get in a big box store, in an art supply store, and then they'll stay fine. Okay, who is our, who's our champ? Noeletta Cardenas in Washington State. Noelena Cardenas. Noeletta. Noeletta Cardenas. Welcome, and you're getting a, a set in the, in the mail, and thank you so much for showing up well, today. So, Noeletta, what we need you to do is send us a direct message through uh, Facebook so that we can <coughs> get your address. Obviously, don't put it in the chat room. <coughs> Um, but just, just send Silver Brush your, uh, a direct message and we'll get your address and send this to you. Well, next time we have a lot more to go over. I'm just looking at all the other brushes I didn't cover today. And uh, I'd be glad to go over it with you. Thank you so much for coming today. I really appreciate your time. And you have a wonderful day. Stay safe. Stay home and stay safe. And Thank paint. You. To paint. Paint all, right. all the time. Bye, everybody. Bye -bye. Thanks for coming. Thank Bye -bye. you.